Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam, Namo Namaha, Jai Ganesha. Please visit our website at classicalyoga.org and there's a donate button there if you'd like to help us out. We need your help. We are a Hindu family. Now I know this is idealistic, but if we don't set an ideal goal, what's the point? Hmm? So we have to be honest with ourselves and recognize that we Hindus have a difficult time sometimes working together. It's an ego thing, of course, whether it's fear or just pomposity or maybe the caste mindset. That Remember, we should never have used that word. Why do we still hold on to these foreign terms really, that should have been expelled from the Hindu yoga dharma a long time ago? Remember, Ganesha represents the remover of obstacles, and we need to know what to let go of, like his gatha, and what to hold on to, like his pasa. Right? Let go of caste, let go of God and Lord, and hold on to the real meaning of yoga. Hold on to our Sanskrit, Tamil, Hindu terms and concepts. Brahman, Ishvari, Ishvari, Mahadev, Mahadevi, Isanaku, Mari, all beautiful Sanskrit, Tamil, Hindu terms you see, so leave God and Lord to Christianity. For the Christian will never ever say to thee, Kali, Krishna, Vishnu, Shiva bless thee, for example. So let's look at ourselves as a Hindu family. And remember, Harihara Ekarupa Gunashila, Karata Swami Sevaka Kelela, Rahate Do Puja Puja Vate, Puja Varate Sabani Sikh Vata. Here's part of our family <laughs> is Kuchnavi. So remember, we also have figures of animals in our mandirs, right? We see the divine spirit flowing through all things. So we have Mushika in our mandirs. We have Nandi. We have Garuda, Muil, Peacock. So we are a Hindu family. Saiva, Vaishnava, Shakti, Vitarka Mudra, the three. So let us live in harmony and follow the Dharma and plant your yoga tree. Karma Bhakti Raja Gyani. This is Hindu Dharma Om Shanti. Ganapati Muraga Shiva Shakti. Ganapati Krishna Vishnu Lakshmi. Ganapati Hanuman Sitaram. Durga Lakshmi Saraswati. Kali Durga Parvati. We are a Hindu family. Saiva Vaishnava Shakti the three. The three Sampradayas. So when someone says we have no beliefs, be very cautious of someone who utters that because what is happening in there is they're probably programming you into their belief system. Hmm? So belief is important, but we don't want to just stay in belief. We want to turn our beliefs into convictions. Hmm? So they start as assumptions. This is the scientific method, hypothesis, assumptions, beliefs. But we want to turn them into a conviction, a shraddha, a full faith. So too, with faith itself, we need that. It starts as hope. That's asha. And through time and testing, we want that hope to turn into more or less a guarantee or a shraddha. So belief and faith, very, very important. But we don't want to just stay in the initial stages. That's where a lot of people have a problem with belief and faith, that we just stay in the initial stages without proving it out. It's like, only using the beginning of the scientific method without ever reaching a conclusion. But then, of course, we always keep our minds open for new discoveries. So, beliefs are very, very important. And we can look at the understanding of the correlation with Hindu dharma and science. We should have no problem with science. In fact, Veda means to know, a passion to know, actually. And science means to know. So we, as Hindus, should be very comfortable, even though obviously there are some of us that are very dogmatic in a very negative sense, very cultic, right? We should always be open to new discoveries, know what we know, and then be prepared to have our beliefs challenged. And if they stand firm, wonderful. So let's look at science for a minute. And the dynamics of physics, we have gravity in order, electricity, Magnetism, basically the three, also nuclear, of course. 
But gravity, electricity, magnetism, think of that, G-E-M. If you want to uncover the gem inside of you, follow this principle of gravity, electricity, and magnetism. In other words, gravity is the foundation. That's the first force, obviously. And they actually go from weakest to strongest. So look how strong gravity is, much less electricity and magnetism. So gravity is foundational qualities. Taking things seriously, right? we want to take life seriously, but not too seriously. Grave matters, gravity, grave. And then electricity, and then magnetism. And we can uh, liken these three forces to our physical body from the belly down is gravity. That's also our animal nature. Electricity at the heart, the electricity of the heart, the powerful emotional feelings. Hmm? And then the magnetic head. So in our own body, we go from gravity to electricity to the magnetic head. And this is also why we worship Ganapati and why he is a foundational devata for all sampradayas. Because he represents this gravity, electricity, magnetism. In other words, the animal, the human, and the divine nature. And he's also obviously associated with the first chakra. We're going to go into this more in our next video because we're coming upon a Ganesha Chaturthi. But Ganesha is also associated with the earth. We know that from his creation story. First chakra. All these reasons why we always beseech Mahaganapati first. But if we use this gem principle with our Sampradayas, this becomes very profound. Whether we're Saivas, Vaishnavas, or Shaktites. We all start with Ganesha. So for Saivites, we have Ganesha. And then we have Muruga at the heart. He's one of the youthful, loving warrior deities, a heart deity. Hmm? And then Siva Sakti, the divine head. Gravity, electricity, magnetism, Ganesha, Muruga, Shiva Shakti. If we're a Vaishnava Hindu, it's Ganapati, Krishna, same thing, youthful, loving warrior, Vishnu, Lakshmi. Or in Vaishnavism, Ganapati, Hanuma, another youthful, loving warrior deity. See how it works? Hindu Dharma is like a beautiful puzzle when we put all the pieces together. And then Sita Ram. And if you're a Shakti, Shaktite, Sampradaya, if you follow that, then it's Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati. But there's something beautiful in Shaktiism because notice we've been going from where we are into inner space or outer space, from down to up. But in Shaktiism, where everything gets flipped around, and remember that's why we don't use the word God because that's a male deity which insults the feminine, right? We don't use that term. Use your own Sanskrit Tamil terms. So in Shaktiism, we have before creation, ah, Kali, into the Big Bang of creation, Durgama, into the coalescence through the evolutionary process of where we are now, Parvati, Kali, Durga, Parvati. So, we are a Hindu family, Saiva, Vaishnava, Shakti, the three. So let us live in harmony and follow the dharma and plant your yoga tree. Karma Bhakti Rajigani is Hindu dharma Om Shanti, Ganapati Muruga Shiva Shakti, Ganapati Krishna Vishnu Lakshmi, Ganapati Hanuman Sita Ram, Durga Lakshmi Saraswati, Kali Durga Parvati. We are a Hindu family, Saiva Vaishnava Shakti, the three. So, we have our GEM principle. Now, here's another acronym. We love our acronyms here. The NAT principle, N-A-T. And we can play with this word a little bit. You may know that the word NAT refers to, they often use it in the military, for one who is just very properly dressed, right? And you have to be in the military. That's the discipline, right? So they're very natty, right? Everything has to be lined up, perfect order, very natty, right? Or on the other end of the spectrum, if you will, you have a gnat with a silent G, gunat. <laughs> That's a pest. So this is a beautiful understanding of the swing of life, the sada lola hara, the truth of the swing of life, which helps destroy our ignorance. We may flip-flop from one to the other. We may be very well-appointed, well-dressed, well-turned out, if you will. Or we may be a pest. The choice is up to us. 
NAT or NAT-D. So this really applies to this acronym because in life in general, but certainly relevantly when it comes to the religions of the world, let's take this principle, NAT. One's religion is not no way or always, which means the same thing. That's universalism. Or the other extreme of the way. Hmm? That's the pure, if you will, fundamentalist. So we often vacillate between these two extremes of being a fundamentalist or a New Age universalist, or being a New Age universalist and then converting over to being a fundamentalist. So this is the sada lulahara of life as we swing like a teeter-totter back and forth. This is what we do as we go through our various life experiences. You can watch people often flip-flop from one to the other, a fundamentalist to a universalist, a universalist to a fundamentalist. But at some point, like the teeter-totter, we learn to walk up to the middle so that we fall flat on neither end. We've known them. Yeah, that's why you have one foot on one side of the teeter-totter, one foot towards the other. So we've known what it is to be an extremist. That's why Hindus understand reincarnation. And we have to live through these experiences, all the good, all the bad, all the sukha-dukha, raga-devation. So we eventually reach a middle balance point. Hmm, balance in life is everything, huh? Like Mr. Miyagi said, go find the balance, right? But balance comes after you choose. Remember, that was his first lesson. You have to choose first. So we've chosen our way, right? Hindu Dharma. And within Hindu Dharma, we've chosen our way, whether it's Saiva, Vaishnava, or Shakti. Of course, there's Smarta also that incorporates all of them. All right? So that's another way of looking at it. But we find that balance in the middle, relevantly speaking, and... N-A-T, the middle balance is a way. This, so, this could go a long way to alleviating a lot of tension, if you will, at best, between the various religions of the world. Recognize that your religion is a way. It's not the way. It's the way for you, of course, but it's not the way for everybody. And it's not a universal way. Eh, there is a difference there. Hmm? The pure fundamentalist will say that every other way is wrong or evil. The fundamentalist universalist is doing something very specific and claiming that that is universal, and so they will incorporate that in all religions. Enter today's phony yoga, right, where they think yoga applies to everybody's religion. So the, there's a fundamentalism to that universalism. This is a subtle difference, or not. If you see it, it becomes very blatant. And many Hindus suffer from this. They think, when they use the term Sanatana Dharma, that, oh yes, Hindu Dharma, Sanatana Dharma, is the religion and everything else is a reflection of it. This is simply, you know, a fundamentalist, universalist viewpoint. And it comes from those who, that's all they've ever known in their life, and so they obviously think it's universal in that sense. Hmm. So really reflect on this, on this important Nat principle. And humbly admit that your way is a way. It's not the way, and it's not no way or a universal way for all. It's for all those who choose it again, but it's a way. Just like a mountain path. It's a way up the mountain, right? We often use that analogy, but remember, not all paths are the same. They're not the same. And maybe not all of them to go to the top. It's a very important distinction there. So the Nat principle. It's a way. And then within any specific religion, like Hindu Dharma, our sampradaya is not the way. It's a way. Don't fall for that trap like the Hare Krishnas did. Or There are many, especially Vaishnavas, can be very sectarian, believing that Vishnu Krishna, being indoctrinated that way, is really the deity. And they'll use the word God. They're misusing that word. And they'll say that really is God that manifests in all things. And we even have pictures of that. So that's... That's just a fundamentalist, universalist viewpoint. Right? We don't want to fall for that trap. Right? And there are sectarian uh, saivas too, right? and, shak and perhaps some shaktites also. So remember, even within our specific religions, Hinduism specifically, our sampradaya is a way, it's not the way. Hmm? Obviously, you all know that I'm a saiva Hindu, you can clearly see that. Hmm? But I fully respect my Vaishnava and shakta brothers and sisters. Hmm? So, how about this? Anupati Ushatkala, Ganapati Upanashaha, Parvati Moroganam Nama Shivaya, Shivaya Nama Uhu. 
Dved Ved Dharma Bharyo. So what are we saying? Up in the morning. Ganapati Bama Saha. Pavati Moraganum Nama Shivaya. Shivaya Nama Uhu. Dved Ved Dharma Bharyo. Day by day, follow the Dharma. Va or Anupati Ushakala. Ganapati Upanashaha. Krishna, Vishnu, Lakshmi, Om Namo Narayana, Namo Narayana, Dved Ved Harma Bhariyo, Va, Up in the morning, Gyanapati Bama Sahar, Hanuman Sita Ram, O oh, Ram Ram Sita Ram, Ram Ram Sita Ram, Dved Ved Harma Bhariyo, Va, Anupati Ushakala, Ganapati Upanishad, Durga Lakshmi Sarasvati, O Kali Durga, Parvati, Dved Ved Dharma Bharyo. Sub Hindus, Sarva Hindus, all Hindus follow. Karma Bhakti Raja, Gyana Hatha, Mantra Japa Naranatha, because it's Yoga Dharma, it's Hindu Dharma. Step by step, pade pade, dharma bharyu, pade pade, dharma bharyu. So, fellow Hindus, remember we are a Hindu family. Saiva, Vaishnava, Shakti, the three. Then everything's okay. So let us live in harmony and follow the Dharma plant your yoga tree. Karma Bhakti Raja Gyani. This is Hindu Dharma Om Shanti. Ganapati Murga Shiva Shakti. Ganapati Krishna Vishnu Lakshmi. Ganapati Hanuman Sita Ram. Durga Lakshmi Saraswati. Kali Durga Parvati. We are a Hindu family. Saiva Vaishnava Shakti the three. Om Shanti. Namaste Namaskaram Vanakam Namo Namaha.